Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto manga review. This one is going to be for chapter 61, which is called Madness. So, um, yeah, a bit, bit of a weird chapter this time out. Very similar, I think, to a lot of the chapters we've had quite recently. A lot of just waiting for things to get going. And while I think, you know, a lot of people will maybe give this chapter a pass because it is the chapter where we kind of finally do set things into motion a little bit. I still feel that this should be considered as part of like the last group of six chapters where the series has kind of just been spinning its wheels a little bit. Yes, there's been some development going on, but has it really felt like half a year's worth of development? That's where I don't think so. I think they have over, they, they've used far too much page count to accomplish uh, very little and that to me is the definition of this chapter uh, this chapter Really you can read probably the last seven eight pages and get everything you need to know about this chapter uh, And everything else is just excessive setup to me for the final couple of pages and while where it promises to go in the coming chapters is exciting we don't get that right now, and so it feels just like, yeah, it's been, well, half a year since the, the end of the last fight, and we've been in this sort of transition arc, building up what we're doing next, and yes, Code is finally going to make his move, Kawaki's uh, doing something here, Sasuke's there and thereabouts, they're the main sort of takeaways here. You have to keep in mind that, like, 35 pages or so of this chapter was... Um, talking about the the cards again S explaining for like the third or fourth time how the uh, Yamanaka clan sort of uh, sensory networks in the village um, you know Shikamaru and uh, Amado having the most vague conversation in the world that literally is just we still don't trust you Amado there's something going on with you isn't there and him being like no, why would you suspect me? And them just kind of looking at each other like they know that there's something else going on. Um, so a lot of just, these are just pages. Things just happened on these pages and they're not super, super exciting. So uh, let's just jump in here and go through this sort of page by page. I don't think we're going to be here too long compared to other chapters. Um, a lot of this stuff I think is very really like we can just blow straight through it. We do get Amado on the cover, um, which is kind of cool, but uh, we move on. So yeah, we open up with them opening up some X cards, and again, you know, Borto gets uh, Shino, which is a, a joke that we, we've had before. Um, so it is nice to see Borto again, you know, he's actually in this chapter a little bit, but the focus has very much shifted away from him of late. Um, the focus here in this scene is basically that the, uh, the you know, they have a shinobi watching them. Uh, and this was the big plot point of last chapter that uh, this guy is following uh, Kawaki around the village. And he maybe doesn't quite feel at home. But Naruto manages to convince him that, no, it is home. This is just sort of the way it has to be. That he's there for all of our protection because code could attack at any point. That it's sure an invasion of your privacy to a certain degree, but he's here to, one, I suppose, watch Kawaki, but also keep an eye on just, uh, you know, two very important people in the village at this point in time, which is Borto and Kawaki. Um, so that's basically what they talk about here. You know, we do get a bit of Inojin here and Shikadai, which is kind of fun, but, uh, you know, the focus on them is, is very uh, minimal. Um, then they bring up the barrier around the village again. We've heard about this before. And so this is just them explaining to Kawaki the details of it because I suppose he maybe knew there was something like this but didn't know the specifics. So he gets that explained to him here. Again, this to me is the, the absolute definition of something where you are wasting a little bit of page count in that we have literally had this exact explanation before. This is just showing it again because Kawaki happens to not know the specifics of it. Um, so yeah, that, that's what we're dealing with here. They do sort of bring up the idea of like, okay, we can sense them properly, but then what about like dealing with them? That guy over there is not gonna be much help against code, is he? 
Uh, and so they just kind of have that whole idea. Kawaki again remembers what Amado said, that I suspect Naruto would die one-on-one -on -one versus Code, um, and that, that's how he feels about it. Um, then we get into the idea of, um, you know, erase one's chakra, chakra signature. Um, that's the way to sort of get through the barrier in and out without being detected. And This basically is what this entire scene was there to have. Kawaki thinks about the barrier and how it works and that, oh, what if I erased my chakra, chakra signature? And this is probably the main, like, reveal of the, cha the chapter that, okay, this is something Otatsukis can do, and of course, um, I, I think us as fans, we're still trying to wrap our heads around like exactly the scope of what being Otsutsukified does and doesn't do for Kawaki and Borto. So this is the establishing that this inherent Otsutsuki power, they also have access to to a certain degree as well, though they have to learn it. So they they ha they do the setup there. Then we cut to a new scene where we get to see Sasuke. So he's outside the village with some other, other shinobi who are watching the uh, claw marks that uh, Code has left on the wall. Because of course from last chapter the setup was that he's left these marks on the walls pretty much outside like all of the villages. Highlighting that hey I can come and see you anytime I want. Uh, so there's multiple marks outside the village and they're trying to figure out like... Uh, if we go too close, he might jump out. What should we do? But uh, Sasuke actually just goes right up to one and has a bit of a look at it and comes to the conclusion that uh, he's not going to emerge here, I suspect. Um, I don't have any proof. Uh, it's simply that if I were him, I'd choose a different spot, that's all. And he's like, oh, you can disregard my opinion. Sorry to bother you. So, um, yeah, he, he just says, carry on watching this. Keep doing your job. So am I. So... Sasuke, we get to see him again, he's now doing something, you know, they establish he has a job here, so the question is, what has Sasuke been assigned to do as such? Now, it's important to keep that in mind, that Sasuke is basically investigating the claw marks outside the village, and what Code is about to do right at the end. So, Sasuke is 100% <clears throat> in play when the action properly kicks off, I suppose, in the next chapter. So, uh, then we get this this scene here, and, and I suppose this is going to be maybe the most hit or miss uh, uh, scene from the entire chapter. Amado comes to talk to Shikamaru, who's sort of uh, up on the roof here, um, you know, coordinating the, uh, the search at the claw marks outside, and... You know, he just says, uh, Code has a fairly cautious nature for sure, but that's not particularly, but he's not particularly bright. I'm surprised. I really didn't expect you, you all to have so much trouble. Um, so he says he just wanted some fresh air. Shikamaru makes a joke that, you know, smoking's prohibited here, even though he himself is smoking as well. And uh, he just says that, you know, to, he's still suspicious of Amado because he says, everything's proceeding exactly according to some master script you wrote. That's what he thinks. And Amado just says, don't be ridiculous. It's been a chain of surprises that I would have never guessed a half a year ago, especially being in Konoha's tender care. But Kawaku is the most unexpected. I didn't think he'd become uh, so devoted to Lord Hokage. The core motivation behind all of his actions now is Lord Hokage. Perhaps it's because he hasn't really known parental love, but if it's for Lord Hokage, he likely won't balk at paying any price. Achikamaru says, it seems beyond a simple father complex, way more intense. That's human love for you. From a different angle, it appears like madness. In fact, there isn't a clear line separating the two. And again, Shikamaru just says, I'm having uh, trouble trusting anything you say, Mr. Genius Scientist. Uh, and then he just randomly asks, do you think that because code is so... Um, you know, obsessed that, like, you know, he's basically a fanatic of the Otsutsukis. Uh, what if the reason we haven't seen him so far is that, like, he's gotten so depressed from the loss of Ishiki that he no longer has the drive to actually execute his revenge? And Amado's just like, uh, if, if that that's pretty optimistic. If only that were true. And it's like, uh, no. Um, so, yeah, to me, like, that, it's one of these things where, like, it just gets across that, okay, Shikamaru still suspects Amado, well... That's super obvious because he's being really, really coy about, like, everything. And there's clearly something going on, but they're not ready to tell us what exactly it is. Beyond that, it just seems like he's noticed more than anyone that, oh, 
Kawaki's probably do some going to do something pretty crazy to, in his mind, save Naruto, which I guess is what he's about to do here. Um, then we see um, Kawaki kind of going out. Um, he says he's going to take out the trash, including a bundle of magazines. Um, and they're like, you know, can you not wait until the morning to do this? We see the guy is still watching him from outside Naruto's house. Uh, and he's reporting what exactly Kawaki is doing, putting the trash out and so on. He drops the, the, the bundle of magazines down and then um, basically jumps like into a bush. So he's temporarily like out of sight, but he walks immediately out. And he makes it look like it was an accident, like he blind jumped over a wall and landed in the bush on the other side. So it's reported that, oh, he's gone back into the house, but it becomes abundantly clear that he's actually formed a shadow clone. And he sent the shadow clone back into the house, and the real Kawaki is still uh, there uh, in the bush. So he just ignores Borto and goes to bed. And Borto actually catches on to this sort of straight away, and he's like, wait, I can sense Kawaki's presence from outside the house, even though he just walked by. Uh, what's going on? Uh, so, and the guy outside is still sensing that, like, oh, he's still in the house. So, officially, he's uh, still in there, but uh, we know what is actually going on. So, he realizes, ah, oh, it's a shadow clone. Um, so, Kawaki darts to make an escape from the village here. He tries to get outside. Um, and he notices that, oh, the guy sensing outside can't sense that this has actually happened. How has this actually worked? He's a sensory shinobi. I get he did a shadow clone. But if he's sensing close enough, he should still be able to be aware that, you know, Kawaki, there's two Kawakis basically, there's two versions of his chakra, but he just can't sense the real one for some reason. So what's actually happening? Um, and Borto figures it out. He's erased his chakra signature and it's like, how has he done this? Which is where we cut over to uh, Ada and she's obviously watching with her kind of um, all seeing eye ability. And she's like, hey, Code, Kawaki's on the move. He's headed somewhere by himself. Uh, and she's like, wait, how has he managed to do that? And she says he's nulling his chakra signature. It's a trick that comes naturally to all Otatsuki, but he shouldn't have been aware of it yet. Maybe it was instinctive, like, like how a foal is able to get up on its own right after being born. So this is the moment that Code is going to use the strike. And this is what they've been waiting for. They've been waiting for a moment to strike when things are a bit chaotic because an organized village is something they're not probably going to be able to go up against effectively. So Kawaki on his own is the perfect chance for code to strike. So that's what we're doing. So he comes out of a claw mark on a tree and I suppose we're not entirely sure of where he is, but like, I, I guess he comes out, you know, obviously in the vicinity of where Kawaki is just outside the leaf village. And again, this is where you bring up the idea of the Sasuke scene. What was Sasuke doing? He was investigating the claw marks and had a sense for, he won't come out of this claw mark. And the idea realistically is Sasuke probably knows what claw mark he's going to come out of. So this seems like this crazy thing that Kawaki is doing, but Sasuke is probably on the case as well. So the big thing is going to be, okay, Sasuke and Kawaki, but then Borto is also aware of what's going on. Uh, and then he realistically should tell people what's happening here. But, you know, we have to wait and see exactly what uh, comes of this. But anyway, um, what we get from here is that he's code is like, guide me, Ada, where is he? Um, and so we see Kawaki jump over the, the, the wall. Um, Borto says he's going to, uh, he says, I can't go after Kawaki like this. The watcher will catch me. But how did he raise his chakra? So he goes upstairs, he talks to the Kawaki shadow clone, and Kawaki just says, keep your voice down, it'll be trouble if they find out. Um, and he's like, how did you erase your chakra signature? How come I can tell where the real you is? So this is this thing of like, I don't actually know where the real you is, but I just inherently know where the real you is. I know you're the shadow clone, how is this actually working? And um, Kawaki, the real Kawaki, kind of realizes this and is like, it's probably because he's Otatsuki too, or due to our affinity. He's sensing me via something like wave patterns. And we see a code waiting in the trees, uh, I guess, nearby. 
and he's a, he's alerted by Ada that uh, Kawaki's outside the village heading due west. Uh, I wonder why. Whatever it is, I'll just ask him directly. And the you know setup is obviously um, this is um, what's happening here. That there's going to be the big confrontation here. To be continued. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a chapter that ends right as it's about to get good. Um, I do think the sudden reveal of like, oh, Borto and Kawaki both are going to have the ability to just null their chakra signature. That's actually kind of interesting. Um, the idea of like, okay, in my speculation ahead of this chapter, I think what I said was that I don't think Kawaki will try to leave the village because I don't know what that actually accomplishes. Because him trying to sort of guide Code away from the village so that he attacks him and not the village doesn't make sense because Code still wants to kill a group of people. He wants to kill everyone who was involved with killing Ashiki. So it's not just him. The focus is not just on Code having a specific interest in Kawaki. It's the whole group. So what does this actually accomplish? Um, Kawaki just deciding to flee like this. Um, my guess is that they're probably going to reveal that somehow, some way, Sasuke has maybe planned something with Kawaki uh, because it seems a little bit too convenient that Sasuke happens to be sort of like right on the case of investigating the code marks right as code is uh, about to pop out. So um, I'm guessing something like that has maybe been planned. So uh, I can potentially see a little bit of a flashback scene uh, coming up that they'll reveal that maybe in the next chapter that code is confronted by Kawaki and Sasuke and it's a little bit of a surprise uh, and we'll see where Sasuke stands with regards to how strong he is whether the Rinnegan or what the situation is with that because again this is the first time we've seen Sasuke in ages and there's no mention whatsoever about like the fact that he's now missing an eye um, or what he's done about that, like how weak or not he is. Uh, it's still just the Sasuke we know where he, he covers up his Rinnegan eye the whole time. Um, so that's the big uh, tease that we have sort of going on there. Um, the whole Amado thing, I'm, I'm at, at this point, I'm kind of like, you had your opportunity, I think, to do this at one point. Like, what was it? This the, the speculation going into, I think, last week's chapter, the, the cliffhanger was very really clear that, like, oh, with Tsumare, here's a chance to, for him to actually reveal something, but there's not a lot going on. Now, one thing they didn't do that I thought they would do is reveal who was in uh, the pod, who the uh, ally is that, has, that uh, Amado has, uh, that we're obviously either suspecting is a new cyborg or it's going to be Delta. Uh, they, ha they haven't committed to that either way at all. Uh, that's why the Amado scene also felt a little bit out of place that he goes straight from right next to that pod to just randomly having a conversation with Chikamaru uh, that happens to directly seemingly relate to a character understanding thing with Kawaki. And again, there's still, he wants to tell something to Kawaki on his own that he can't have anyone else here. What's that about? It, there, there's just so, some kind of confusing things here. So it's one of those chapters where it's like, look, it wasn't a bad chapter by any means, but it was a chapter that highlighted the flaws that I think are present within Borto from time to time. And that is a pacing problem. Uh, and uh, what can often happen in certain runs of chapters, which, uh, which is a thing I've said in multiple reviews, and that is a really, really poor use of the page count. You have 40 pages. You have, you're doing a monthly chapter. You have 40 pages to work with. Why are you wasting so much time to accomplish so little? Like we've, like I said, we've already had like five. The previous five chapters before this one have been all set up. Most of this is set up once again, and the one thing you would say that it has going for it is that it finally kicked things into motion. But this is where we get into in terms of judging this chapter. Well, there's a difference between reviewing this as the hot new chapter that's just been released. It's not particularly 
overly hype at the moment. But when we have the volume and it's just the second chapter in this volume and there's no gap between reading it, you go straight from 60 to 61 to 62, it'll probably be a perfectly fine roleplay chapter and you can probably get that sense right now. But in reading it when this is the most present part of the story, it feels kind of rough that we ended the last chapter with this tease of like, what's Kawaki going to do? There's one thing he can do to help Naruto. And then they tease the idea of like, okay, he's left the village to do something. What's Kawaki going to do? It's still the same question that they just basically did 30 more pages of setup on top of that. That I don't think this Kawaki build has been the most effective across like what nearly 200 pages um, or, or whatever and I, I, I think that's sort of where this is kind of not worked so well in that some of these chapters like I said haven't used their page count effectively it doesn't feel like it's been half a year of build up to this it feels like oh yeah this happened and this happened and this happened and it's just like okay Fine, I, I get what Kawaki's character motivation is at this point in time. I didn't need you to spend seven pages explaining to me the, the um, Yamanaka sensory system in the village again. I didn't need, a seven, like a, again, like a five, six page uh, discussion between Shikamaru and Amadil where they basically tell you what is blatantly clear from the chapters that have already happened and uh, everything it's just it th there's there's frustrations with this chapter for sure and uh, it, it's one of those things where like I, I've definitely seen it over the last few months of the the people after the first like three or four set up chapters being like oh no, it's still good it's still good but the last two chapters I think have really just to me been like I've seen much more people just be like come on get to the show come on let, 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 let's get it moving a little bit more and they have to be fair, they have, and hopefully the next chapter will have our answers. I think you probably at this stage have to reveal what is Kawaki doing in this moment. Because like I said, I don't think the motivation here is I am escaping from the village to draw code away because nothing makes it clear that Kawaki has the ability to take out code on his own and code is still after defeating Kawaki, going to come to the village and go after the others. Uh, so that doesn't really change all that much. Um, so there has to be a plan. And I think Sasuke is likely involved in that. But again, you, you need to you know, establish that through some sort of a flashback sequence or something like that. And how, how, did, how did it happen? Because again, uh, Kawaki's being monitored. So any conversation he might have had with Sasuke probably was seen already. But I guess it's not really that big of an issue if Sasuke talks to Kawaki, but just the fact that Sasuke has been absent for so long is, is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, um, that that's pretty much the chapter. Um, to me, it's just a little bit disappointing, but it has moments. The setup for next time is actually going to be good. So unlike the last, I think, couple of months where... I, my prediction has been, I think we're just going to get, like, another one of these chapters. I do think next month's chapter is actually going to be a properly significant chapter. So the next two, which will be these uh, third and fourth chapters in the uh, volume that we're on currently, uh, they're going to have to be, I think, the action set piece uh, chapters. Now, a lot depends on what they do here. If that Okay, if, they, if that's what they're going to do. We're going to get Code versus Kawaki and Sasuke either is in that fight from the start or joins it later. Um, what do we do? Um, because again, Borto's onto things, so there's the opportunity for the Leaf to really heavily come after Code. But can they contain Code to the point where Code can't just escape? Um, in that, it seems like, you know, Ada is not going to be the most effective if we bring her onto the battlefield. But if we brought Demon on board, he could actually do something. Um, but is, is this just how the fight is going to take place? Of like they've, quote-unquote, lured um, Code out into the open here, and they're going to use this as a chance to take him out. They've taken the initiative to a degree. 
by utilizing Kawaki in this way, um, and and how's it going to happen? Like, are we just going to defeat Code here and then go to the time skip, or are we going to have a scuffle here, uh, highlight Code's power level, realize that oh, the best we can do is fight to a draw, and then go into a time skip? There's still a few questions about just the overall like where are we heading, but overall pretty solid in my books. Um, so they're my thoughts on the chapter. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts are, but that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.